I am really, really excited to be doing this video today. Today is February 25th, 2019, Monday. And the topic we're going to discuss today is what do you really want? I think that's my title. <laughs> Sounds good anyway. So we're going to talk about what is it that you're really, really interested in doing? What do you really want to have in life? Oh, you want uh, that super fancy car or a new boat because you like to go fishing or hmm, new house, better job, new clothes, new motorcycle. <laughs> I don't know. Those are mostly guy things, I guess. Or ladies. A house would be probably something you would like, or maybe a pool, or a whole closet situated just like one I saw in Chicago uh, years ago when I was working in the hospitals and nursing homes. Uh, I flew up to Chicago with my wife and the uh, administrator of our particular facility, and we stayed with the one of the owners of the company there. His wife just happened to be from where I'm from, and uh, <laughs> she she wanted to give everyone a tour of their home, which that's normal. So uh, we were all walking around, ooing and on. Wow, ooh man, you know. I mean, this place was literally a castle that they had taken apart stone by stone, had it shipped to America and rebuilt. It was incredible. It was incredible. Oh, but the part I'm getting to is her closet. Man, man. You know, you think, um, what was her name? Marcos Light Shoes. Oh, man. This lady is the same age as me at that time. Uh, she had a three-story, let me say that again, a three-story closet. She had a ramp that led on up <laughs> to the upper store. She's only like five foot two, so she needed the ramp. But anyway, I would have needed a ramp. I'm six feet tall. She had matching clothes, matching shoes, matching slips, matching hats, matching everything. All laid out up that entire three-story, three-story closet. And it was jam-packed full. Neatly, but jam-packed full. That's something she wanted. And she got it. Her husband <laughs> made millions of dollars a year. It get her anything she wanted. That's what she wanted. I mean, that was her big deal. When we were downstairs and we opened the Sub-Zero, do you guys know what a Sub-Zero refrigerator is? <laughs> They're expensive. Sub-Zero refrigerator. Opened them up. In there was a pack of cheese a Perrier water and a quart of milk. That was it. Because he ate out all the time. It was, it was incredible. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful home. Beautiful. I, it, was, it was beyond anything most of my friends have ever even seen. I was fortunate to get to see that place. Uh, they lived right down the street from Mr. T. Any of you older people that ever watched the original A team know who Mr. T is. He'd be a Baracus, you know, anyhow. So uh, that was really fascinating to see that place. I won't go into detail other than when we were getting ready to leave, we did go to the garage out front of the home on the circular drive where the mundane cars, the Mercedes, the Lincoln, the Cadillacs, <laughs> They were sitting outside in the garage was a vintage 
looked like it rolled off the showroom floor in 1937. Rolls Royce convertible. And beside it was a brand spanking new Rolls Royce convertible. Same color, same saddle interior, same everything. Man, just fantastic. So what do you want? Cars, home, clothes, better job. You want your church to be bigger? Do you want your people in the congregation to be more into worshiping? Do you want your kids to mind? I mean, really, what do you want? Well, some people try to demand, force, beat children into submission or beat their congregations into submission or whatever. They try to finagle um, getting good with the boss so they can move up. There's all sorts of stuff out there. What I have found, and I'm 69 years old, what I have found over all these years and I know there's a couple of youths over me, but anyway, <laughs> listen to me. What I have found is when you do your best, when you have the best interests of others at heart, the best interests of the company, the best interests, interests of the church, the best interests of your family, the best interests of your friends, the best interests of other people, good things come to you. I talked, and I've talked before, and I will say it again. How you tip will determine your wealth and your happiness in the future. The standard tip nowadays is 15%. Of course, I guess most people know that. Let me tell you, I don't leave 15%. I go in, I judge my tip by my service. Now, I don't get carried away with percentages because if I've got a $100 bill, you know, receipt, I'm probably not going to leave a $20 tip. Can't see it. I might leave, I might leave a $15 tip. Maybe. However, I go out to lunch a lot. Usually my lunch is about $10. I always leave a $5 tip. And you're going, oh, me, that's 50%. But the waiter or waitress serviced me and whoever I went to lunch with in such a fantastic way. They were well worth $5 tip. Do you realize in most states, the waiter or waitress does not get over about two fifty, two seventy five an hour. If they don't make any tips, they don't make it. I think that's ludicrous. I always think I also think it's wrong, but anyhow, that's the way it is. So when I'm tipping, I'm taking up their time, that's their shop for a better for want of a better word, that's their shop. That table is their shop. While I'm there, I'm taking up their shop space. Therefore, I'm going to compensate them for taking up their space because I tend to talk a lot. And I two-hour lunch is my minimum. Two and a half is average. Three-hour, that's about the, my limit. I always take two-hour lunch. So I'm taking up their space. It's me and another person. If I leave a five-hour tip, and they leave a four or five dollar tip, they have gotten adequate compensation for the time we were there. Even though we had a little check, we took care of them. If I'm out with somebody and the bill comes to $100 and we were there for an hour and a half and we got great service, I will probably leave about a $15 tip, maybe 20 which would be 20%. But if a check had been $200, I'm not leaving a $40 tip. <laughs> Just the way I look at it. Most of my meals 
even when my wife and I go out, are $25 to $35 tops. And when she and I goes out, I leave anywhere from $6 to $8 tip, sometimes 10 Because to me, it's reasonable for the time that we took up. How did I get onto that when I said, what do you really want? Well, here's how it works. When you put out into the ether wealth, health, good feelings, goodwill, it comes back to you. Do I buy people lunch? Oh, yeah. And at some point, maybe not them, but somebody buys me lunch. When I go into restaurants, in general, no matter where I go, I really get good service. And if anybody's had me before, I definitely get good service. Is that tit for tat is a term they used to use when I was a little kid. Sort of. What you put out into the world is what you're going to get back. It comes right out of the Bible. All of you Bible scholars out there already have probably got the scriptures popping in your head, so I don't need to go into them. What you put out in the world, even if you're not a Christian, is what you're going to get back. Do you understand that concept? If you put out goodwill, you're going to get goodwill. Sometimes you're going to get bad will, and you're going to be like, wait a minute here, I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm a good girl. Why am I getting all this bad will? Well, it's out there. You're probably not getting it because of something you did. It's not karma. That's a misunderstood word, but I won't use it in this context. Somewhere, that person is putting out bad will, and it's going to come back to them. You just happen to be the recipient of that, which <laughs> it's not fun. However, how you respond, not react, respond, will determine if that bad vibe that was given to you or that bad action or that bad attitude, if you respond in a way that you feel Jesus would probably respond. Hey, even you non-Christian guys, same thing. Respond in a calm manner, not vengeful, not I'm going to get you, sucker, but you respond in a way without animosity toward that person. Man, it's going to come back double on them, and you are going to be blessed double or triple or quadruple fold. So what you put out is what you get back. Do you have to do some things for the future? That, that now you're thinking, man, I, how am I going to set aside this much money a month for life insurance? Dude, you better do it. Take care of your wife and family. Don't buy that new boat. Don't get that motorcycle. Don't get that new fishing reel. Get insurance. Don't get term insurance unless it's on your house or your car. That's the only time I sold insurance 27 years. That's the only time it's really of use. Get whole life insurance. Does it cost more? Yep. Whole life insurance is like oil in your engine. It keeps it going. Term insurance is like gas. Every time you go to the gas station, you got to go again. <laughs> it just doesn't last. Neither does term insurance. So, I've covered a few topics today. Get my newsletter, www.astepabove.life. Subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Just about every week I send out at least one, sometimes two or three. Depends on how the week's going. Occasionally I'll skip a week, but I make up for it. Also, I do a video just about every week, sometimes more than once. This video will be on YouTube. It's also going to be in my newsletter. So uh, check it out. And remember, when you check out www.stepabove.life, order some of our Step Above Coffee. It helps support our ministry. Order some of the uh, 
all natural essential oils soaps. That helps support our ministry. We do a lot of stuff to support our ministry. Anyway, also got a new book coming out. Well, I say it's coming out. I hope it's coming out. I'm trying to find a literary agent to uh, represent that book for me. So uh, this will be my... I got two books. I got one I've already finished. It's a uh, fictional book uh, about the 1940s and a private eye back then named Chandler Diamond. And the newest book I'm working on is uh, it's called A Step Above. And it's about becoming better tomorrow than you were today. So check me out. The Rev, the Internet Pastor. And make your day a step above what it was yesterday.